So we're going to begin our talk today uh, with the discussion of the physics of music. Now I like to cover this uh, first because uh, it gets us in the right mindset. Uh, first of uh, appreciating our amazing sense of hearing and the way that music works in with that. Um, also of thinking of commonplace things in a new way and also of realizing that you can fruitfully analyze something that most people believe is an art. Now it's interesting, of course, to see how our music flows from science and mathematics, but uh, the more fun part of this talk is the demonstrations. Uh, if you are edging towards the door already because uh, a physics talk was more than you bargained for, just know that, strictly speaking, the things we discuss here are not a prerequisite for the rest of the talk. However, um, they are important to understanding counterpoint, so if you plan to write harmonies, um, it, it behooves you to understand why things are the way they are. So what is sound? Sound is nothing more than vibration within a certain range of audible frequencies. Now sound waves as they travel through a medium transmit energy but they do not transmit the medium itself. Individual particles of air as you can see from the uh, diagrams below more or less stay in the same places as the wave is passing through it. The particles are constantly joining and leaving the propagating wave front. Now the illustrations, uh, the illustrations below show uh, sinusoidal motion, which is a gentle, mellow sound, which I will play for you now. Of course, not all tones are so gentle. Here's another tone called the sawtooth tone. I want you to listen and confirm that it's just one note. Now I'm going to take something away from this tone four times in succession. Tell me if you can hear the difference. It may be a little bit more obvious if I switch back and forth. You were so sure a moment ago that the tone I played was just one note. If that's so, then what are these things you're hearing as I'm taking them out? Now the answer to the question is harmonics. It turns out that in every tone we encounter, there are other tones hiding inside. The reason for this is that any sound of frequency f that is not a pure sine wave can be decomposed into a sum of sine waves at f, 2f, 3f, and so on. Harmonics are generated uh, naturally by any natural instrument. Um, for instance, you can see in the case of the string in the illustration that its motion is the sum of many component motions, each, uh, each of which generates a, a harmonic component. Harmonics are perceptible only if you listen hard for them because usually they blend in with the fundamental to create tone color. So unquestionably, the, mathematically, the harmonics exist. The only question at this point is how do we perceive them? Well, starting with 2F, that's a very interesting harmonic. It's the octave. And for some reason, it sounds just like the fundamental, only, uh, only higher. Now, why is that the case? Well, ultimately, it was because we were just constructed that way. I mean, a silly suggestion is that otherwise, men and women wouldn't be able to sing in unison together. But in any case, from our tone subtraction exercise, we know that 5F is two octaves and a third, 4F is two octaves, 3F is an octave and a fifth, 2F is one octave, and then at that point we were left with just the sine wave at the fundamental, uh, F. Um, now, in this harmonic sequence, in just the first five fundamentals, we've heard the unison, the third, the fifth, and the octave, and all of these are very important intervals in harmony. Uh, so you may correctly uh, suspect that this harmonic sequence forms the basis of harmony. But exactly how? Let's talk about that. Part of the answer is this. Whenever two sine waves, such as harmonics for instance, approach in frequency, they give rise to an unpleasant sounding beating, such as this. And so we are attracted to whatever intervals minimize this amount of beating. So what we can do in a computer is to slide two tones with their fundamentals against each other and we can uh, calculate at each point how badly their harmonics uh, conflict with each other. Then we can graph it out uh, in the graph above. Now, interestingly, the dips in this curve, which should identify the least dissonant uh, intervals, coincide with many of our scale degrees. The major third, the perfect fourth, the perfect fifth, the major sixth, and the octave. So just from harmonics, we've been able to identify a scale.